Hi everyone! This tutorial will deal with the performance of a mixture process design. In particular, we will see how to create the experimental matrix when we have a particular situation with process variables and mixture variables with constraints. Normally, when we have a mixture process design, we need to combine a classical response surface design, for example, a central composite design, and a mixture design. In this case, when we have two factors and three components, and we want to perform seven mixture experiments, we have this combination that will lead to 63 experiments plus a certain number of central points to, exper to evaluate experimental variance. This is the case when no constraints are present for the mixture variables. In our case, the tutorial will deal with some constraints which are involved in the mixture variables. So let's see how to create our experimental matrix. So this is the workflow that we will go through. First of all, we need to define the possible mixture experiments with the constraints applied to the mixer variables. Then we need to, let's say, multiply the candidate points of the first matrix by the central composite design points to obtain all possible experiments. Then we need to build a, like a model matrix to have all the model terms as columns and all the possible experiments as rows, and we will do this with Excel. Then this matrix will be used to select the experimental matrix by the optimal design. The optimal by addition will be used to define the replicated points and then to define the validation points. We will not go through the computation of the model, which is similar to other classical experimental design, since in our case, the tutorial will deal with a work that is, was not completed. So so we don't have the responses to compute the model. So here we have cut. First of all, let's create the possible experiments of the mixture design. So we go to MLR-DOE, mixer constraint setting. In our case, we don't have lower constraints, while the upper constraints is 0 0.95 for the first component, no, none for the second component, and 0.40 for the third component, the grid steps are left as default, 0.05. Here we have the graph that shows the possible experiments. The complete grid is this part highlighted in gray. So we have our candidate points saved in the matrix CP. If we want to see it, we type CP and we will have the full matrix. The mixture variables are defined as x1, x2, and x3. And we have 152 experiments. This is for the mixture design grid. Then we need to multiply this grid for the central composite design points. So what we're going to do, we go to Excel. I, I wrote a simple the simple central composite design matrix for two factors and alpha value equal to one. So we copy this simple matrix. We go to cat again. So we go to data handling, workspace management, new. We will call it CCD. It doesn't matter the number of rows and columns. We select the cell, right click, paste. Now we select use row label and use other row. OK. And we will have our metrics regarding the experiments of the central composite design with our process variables named V1 and V2. Now what we need to do is to merge the two matrices as to obtain like a product of the two set of experiments, the mixture experiments and the central composite design experiment. So we will create this matrix that we will call mixed process.
and we will use the R merge function to create it. So merge, let's write CP, CCD, which are the matrices. This is the function. And now let's see the matrix that we obtained. So we have 1,368 candidate points for our D optimal. But before selecting the experiments, we need to define our model. In our case, we select the linear terms of both the process and mixture variables, the quadratic term of the process variables, the interactions among both the process variables and the mixture variables, the binary interactions, and then ternary interactions between the mixer variables. So we have 12 coefficients. We need to create the model matrix since in the mixer process design, we cannot tell the software to compute the ternary interaction. So we need to create um, the model matrix with all the coefficients. So first of all, we copy our matrix that as you can see, as the column with the mixer variables and the process variables, we copy it and we paste to Excel. I already, I've already done this. Now let's create the, the model matrix with all the terms of the models. As you can see, the quadratic terms, the interactions, the interaction among the process variables and, and the interactions among the mixture variables and the ternary interaction among the mixture variables. This is a very simple operation. We just write some products to compute these terms of the, of the matrix, as you can see. Then we copy this matrix we select it, we copy it, and we paste to cut. We go again to data handling, workspace management, new matrix. Let's call it mix cross all coefficients. Sorry for the long names. Again, right click on the cell, paste. Use row label, use other row. Okay. So as you can see, here we have the complete matrix of the candidate points with all the coefficients in the column, all the model terms. As you can see, we have 1,368 rows. So we go to MLR DOE, the optimal design, we select independent variables. The matrix with candidate point would be the one that we just created. So mix process all coefficients. We the flag intercept because it's a mix, because it's a mixer design, it contains a mixer. And the higher terms because we cre because we created the model matrix with all the terms. And now the lower number of experiment is clearly the number of coefficients, and the upper number of experiment is up to you. It's up to your possibilities. I select 35 experiments. I leave the incremental step as one experiment and the number of trials 10. Now the software will begin to compute the, the determinant of uh, the normalized determinant of the information matrix. So once the computation is finished, we obtain this graph of the logarithm of the normalized determinant versus the number of experiments. So as you can see, we have a steep increase up to more or less 24, 25 experiments. And then we have a quite flat zone. So uh, I decided to select 25 experiments as the 
best option. After the, the optimal computation, the software gives us all the solutions with the certain number of experiments for 12 coefficients. So we need to point out that if we perform uh, the optimal computation um, more times, we will have uh, slightly different solutions because the possible experiments uh, to perform to have the maximum information um, can slightly change from a computation to another. So I had already done this computation and I obtained different experiments for the solution with 25 experiments, but it doesn't matter. You need to copy these uh, experiments and separate the numbers by a comma. I already, I've already done it for the solution of another computation. We copy these numbers, we return to cat, and what we're gonna do is create the matrix with these experiments. We will call it selected experiments, and we will write the complete matrix, so mix process all open bracket, function C, open bracket, we will paste the number of the rows, close bracket, comma, and close square bracket. In this way, we create this matrix, we can see it by typing SD, and here we have our experimental matrix with all the number of the experiments of the complete matrix that we created and all the model terms. We can perform these experiments and compute our model, but we need to perform some replicates. To select the replicates to perform, we can perform at the optimal by addition. So we go to the optimal design by addition, independent variables, the matrix with performed experiments and the matrix with Set with candidate points will be the same. We eliminate intercept and higher terms. Here, the upper number of experiments is up to you. I will put 10. And in this case, um, we don't need to really look at the value of the normalized determinant, but just to uh, we need to just decide how many replicates we want to perform and then see which are the experiments that we need to perform in this case we can set for example six replicates and so the solution with six added experiments is this one the selected points are indicated by the software so now we can really perform the experiments with all the replicates to estimate the experimental variance in our case, um, we will go to MLR DOEM, model computation, independent variables, and so on, as already explained in other tutorials. And once obtained the model, we need to validate the model. We will use again the, the optimal design by addition, and the experiments uh, will be taken from the original complete matrix without the selected experiments. So to create this matrix, we can recall the function that we use to create the matrix of the selected experiments. We can call this matrix, uh, for example, val as validation, because it will be the matrix from which we select the validation points. We, we have the complete matrix as before, and we put just a minus before the C. And in this way, we will have the matrix without the selected experiments. So this is the complete matrix. As you can see, for example, here, the 1,363 experiment is missing because it was one of the selected experiments. So we have this complete matrix. 
we select MLR DOE, the, op the optimal design by addition, independent variables, matrix with performed experiment is SE, matrix with candidate points is PAL, we delete intercept and higher terms. Here, once again, it's up to you. I put 10 up as the upper number of experiments. And the software will compute again the solutions for the different number of experiments. Once again, it is not important to look at the value of the normalized determinant to select the validation points. It's up to you to decide how many validation points you want to perform. Mm, normally, three validation experiments is, uh, is a, an acceptable value. So, we go to the selected points for three added experiments, and we would we will perform these experiments to validate our model. So what we're going to do is to perform these experiments, predict the responses of these experiments uh, with the model, compare the prediction with the experimental values, and uh, if they are in accordance, for example, we can perform an F-test to verify it, we can consider the model validated. And so we can select the optimum and so on. <clears throat> so these were the steps to create the experimental matrix, to select the replicates and the validation points to perform, to correctly perform a mixture process design. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.